Greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Elder R. L. Dunlap Jr. Coming up to you with the only infallible, the only uncompromising, the only, and I do mean the only, unadulterated written word of God. We greet you this morning. We greet you from God the Father and from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive right now and is now set on the right hand of the Father, according to the Scripture. We greet you all today. God bless you. Thank all of you for hearing. All you that watch Good morning to each and every one of you. God bless you. You on YouTube. Uh, you on Facebook. Don't forget now. Facebook. We are on YouTube. We have maybe I'm guessing we may have we may have 500 videos or more on YouTube. You know, check us out, Robert Dunlap YouTube, or you can put in, uh, you can put in also holiness or hell, Robert Dunlap, and when it come up, you that know how to do it. Get all of our videos. <laughs> you know, you that computer savvy, get all of our videos. And I wish I knew somebody that was computer savvy to fix my phone. <laughs> but anyway, YouTube, we're on Facebook. Facebook address, LRL Dunlap Jr. All right. We only represent Jesus. We represent Jesus, period. We represent Jesus. We're not. We. Uh, yes, 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 yes. We belong. I belong to the Church of God of Christ, but I'm not a Church of God of Christ preacher or a representative of the Church of God of Christ. I'm a representative of Jesus Christ, and it's an honor for the Church of God of Christ to have me a member of their organization. Oh, that's a great honor. <laughs> I represent Jesus Christ. All right. The blood of Jesus Christ do not cover nobody. You are not covered by the blood. You are not covered by the blood. You are not covered by the blood. You that's covered by the blood of Jesus, you say you covered by the blood of Jesus. I want you right now on the screen, put the scripture up. That say you covered by the blood of Jesus. Put it up there as I sip some water. I'm waiting. <sighs> hey man, I, I look, I, I thought you said I was fine. I was just gonna say. <laughs> You didn't hide me, you can't find it. <laughs> all, right, all you that watch, God bless you. Sister Suggs, Sister Robinson, Sister Mosley, uh, Pastor Manning, uh, Pastor Young, all of you watch. Okay, no one, no one coming with a script. Okay. I said, give me the scripture that say you covered by the blood. I'm waiting on it. Put the scripture up there that say you covered by the blood. Put the scripture up there. And I take me another sip of water. I'm waiting. Okay. Now, said no one put scripture up. You know, <laughs> cause you, you, it's no scripture, no. There is nobody covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nobody, not even me. I'm not covered by the blood. Uh huh. That's right. Old Testament. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Old Testament. Amen, says the Robin. I know it's not that. <laughs> Go to the Old Testament. In the blood of the bulls and the goats and the heifer, it didn't do the job. 
It didn't do the job. Read Hebrew 10 chapter. The blood of the bowl thing did not do the job. Mm-hmm. You were still in sin. You still had sin. The Bible says it's impossible for the blood of the bulls and heifers and turtle dove to take away sin. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's go. In error. In error. I used to say to myself, I was in error. When you learn better, you do better. I was in error. We say we're covered by the blood of Jesus. The blood cover when somebody is sick. Or, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Who you plead to? Who you plead to? I plead the blood over my house. I plead the blood over my pocketbook. I plead the blood over my family. What? You can't put you can't put Jesus blood on nobody. You cannot put Jesus blood on nobody. No, you can't. Let's not let's not belong the time. Go to scripture. Let's go to scripture. Go to Matthew. Let's see what was the purpose of the blood. The blood had one purpose and one purpose only. Go to Matthew. Follow us with the scripture. You can't plead the blood on nothing. Bible. You can't plead the blood on nothing. In error, we've been taught that. We in error. You still say? You still say? You just in error. But that's why God raised me up and other and many more like me to teach the truth. You in error. You mean well. If somebody's sick, plead, and I've done it myself. When somebody's sick, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. No, when somebody's sick now, you know what I do? Lay hands on them. Lord, heal them. Be healed, be delivered, and be set free, and be made whole in the name of Jesus. Like he told us to do. Not plead the blood. Okay. Go to Matthew. I think I want the... I want to go to the... I want the Last Supper. That's what I want. Here we go. Go to Matthew 26. You ain't getting this in your chair. Matthew 26. Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I preach the truth of God's word. Now let me say this. The false prophet and the false teacher and some in error, okay? Some don't know. They in error. Let's make that clear. But it's false teaching. They got a saying, a, 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 a cliche now that said, how can a sinful man like me and a sinful person like you go before a holy God? How is that possible? Because God don't see my sin. He see the blood. And when he see the blood, he pass over. That's a lie straight out of hell that the devil gave to the church. If you got sin, he see your sin, and the blood don't cover your sin. Uh -huh. When I see the blood, I pass over. Okay, get your, get your theology correct. Doctor, as was in Egypt, when God visited Egypt, it said He gonna kill everything. And when you put the blood on your doorposts, when I see the blood, I pass over. That's what that was talking. The blood don't cover your sin. How can an unholy man and a sinful man like me and you stand before a holy God? How is that possible? Because God don't see our sin. He see the blood in the blood cover. You are a liar. You are a liar. You that don't, that don't know better, you in error. Don't know blood cover your sin. 
If you got sin, God see your sin. And you better repent of your sin. You hear what I said? I said you better repent of your sin before it's too late. The blood ain't going to save you if you're in sin. The blood ain't going to cover. The blood don't cover your sin. Let's read Matthew 26. Matthew 26. I had something else today, but I think I just, you know, let me go this way. We'll do that later on. Matthew 26. See, they don't teach this when you take communion. They don't teach this. Matthew 26. And 20, Matthew 26, 26. Read. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. He gave to his disciples. That's a message right there. He gave to his disciples. That's a message right there. He gave to his disciples. He didn't give to no sinner. He gave to his disciples. He didn't give to no sinner. He didn't give to no sinner. You a sinner. You ain't got to be taking no communion. Something like that happened to you. He didn't eat and drink it on the world and drink it down there to his own body. Many weak and sick. Some already dead. You a sinner, don't you stay away from that community table. Stay away. Before you come to the community table, take communion, you need to be holy. You need to be right. You need to be having repent of your sin. All right. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to his disciples, his disciples, and said, take, eat this in my body. Read. And he took the cup and gave thanks <clears throat> and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for a minute for the remission of sins. Jesus' blood was for and is for the remission of your sin. The taking away of your sin. The cleansing of your sin. That what it's for. Not to cover nothing, but to cleanse it. And when you clean, you ain't done it. All right, go here. Go here to John. I want to go to first John. I always want to give it to you about everything. I want to go to first John. I don't know if blood cover. First John. I want one. First John one. First John one. You can't, you can't plead the blood over those sinners. They are sinners. Ain't no, ain't no blood. Ain't no, the blood they need even, they need even talk. It ain't even touch them. First John, one and seven. Watch this. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The blood clean. The blood clean. The blood, the blood clean. All right, excuse me. The blood cleans from sin. That's what the blood do. It don't cover your sin up. And you didn't believe that lie. And, and you bishop and pastor that tell that lie. God don't God don't see our sin. He see the blood. If you got sin, he see your sin. And you going to hell for your sin if you don't repent of your sin. If you don't stop your sin, you're going to hell for your sin. With the blood on you. <laughs> now, Jesus' blood don't cover your sin. Your blood cover your sin. And you and your blood going to hell if you don't repent. 
Jesus blood cleanse from sin. Clean. Who saw that? Won't he make you clean? Inside. Jesus make you clean. Inside. All right. All right. Let me go ahead on and mess up your theology. By his stripes, we are healed. What is that talking? That's not talking about no physical healing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Put the scripture up there. Put scripture up there. By his stripes, we are healed or were healed. Either one of them. Put it up there. Let's show you the error of your way. That one talking about no physical healing. Put it up there. By his stripes, we are healed. He was wounded for our transgression. For our what? Transgression. Put it up there. Put, put, put it on the screen. So I'm going to put scripture up there. Get it before I get it. Cousin Janet, I see, I, I, I see you. Why? God bless you, Janet. Cousin. Now find the scripture before I find it now. <clears throat> what is that? Isaiah 50, what? 50, 50, what? Oh, that wasn't one. That wasn't no education. You got to say what the scripture said. Donna Heron, God bless you. I'm going to open your, open your understanding. That's how I call. Isaiah 53, 5. And I want the New Testament also. We're going to look at both of them. Get, let me get it. Let me get it. Isaiah 53, 5. All right. Come on, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, 53, 5. Watch this. He was wounded for our transgression. For what? For what? For what? His strike, the stripes were wounds, right? The stripes were wounds. The nail in his hand was wounds. The nail in his feet were wounds. The spear in his side were wounds. What was that for? He was wounded for our, that was for our transgression. For our transgression, for our transgression, for our transgression. That's not talking about physical healing. Yes, he healed, but that ain't talking about physical healing. For our transgression, bruised for what? Are we iniquitous? But set our people on him. By his strike, we are healed. Will heal by his strike. Now get give the new. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen, sister. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the Lord sug. I mean, she on it. First Peter two twenty four. First Peter two twenty four. And, and, and why we getting that? Somebody get the scripture. Ah, uh, he that is whole need not a physician. Somebody put that on the screen. Let go. First Peter two twenty four. Mm hmm. First Peter two twenty four. <coughs> Let's see. He Hebrew James Peter. First Peter two twenty four. See twenty four. Watch it. We need to let's back up and start with twenty two. First Peter two twenty two. Now, someone get the scripture now. What Jesus say, he that is whole need not a physician. Somebody get that scripture and put it on the screen before I get it. Now, you're going to go to 1 Peter 2 3 4. Sarah Galloway, God bless you. North, North, North Memphis. True church house of proud of all nations. 22. Well, 21. 1 Peter 2 21. 
For even here unto word word ye call because Christ suffered for us. You are called, amen, Mark 2, 17. Get ready to go there, Mark 2, 17. I put it. For him to where ye call be cause of Christ's suffering, you are called because of his suffering. You are called because of his suffering. Leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. No, follow the pastor. Follow his step. No, follow me if I follow Christ. Follow his step. When you stop following his step, pastor, we stop following you. That you shall follow his step. Read. Who did no sin? Follow his step. Who did no sin? Follow his step. Who did no sin? Follow his step. Who did no sin? If you follow his steps, don't do no sin. If you following his steps, it say who did no sin, you to follow his steps, so you are to do no sin. Did you hear what the Bible said? First Peter 2, 22. That ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin? Jesus didn't do no sin. You ought to follow his step. Since he didn't do no sin, don't you do no sin. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not sin. Y'all see that? Your pastor never, your pastor never told you that. He never showed you that. <laughs> he told you ain't nobody without sin. Y'all see that? Who did no sin? Follow his steps. Who did no sin? So what they're saying? Don't sin. Don't sin. Don't sin. Don't do it. Well, what if we do it? Repent and don't do it. Stop it. Don't do it. Don't do it. What if we tip it? Don't do it. What if we angry? Don't do it. What if somebody did us wrong? Don't do it. What if somebody made me mad? Don't do it. What if somebody offered me money? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Who did no... Watch it. We shall follow in his step who did no sin. That's the step we should follow. Who did no sin? Is your pastor telling you not to sin? Or is he telling you ain't about without sin? Who did no sin? Let's hold your finger there and go to First John, the second chapter. First John 2 and 1. My little children, the thing I write unto you, that you sin not. Don't do it. Don't do it. That you sin not. Don't sin. But if any man sin, he have added with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Get this. <clears throat> if you sin, you have an advocate. Jesus is the one that will put you. Somebody say that Jesus is our, when we know Jesus is our mediator. Now we sin, my God, let me teach this. And when, you better listen. When you sin, when you sin, now don't sin. Jesus never told nobody to sin. Jesus never told nobody to commit sin. Don't sin. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. They say, well, the advocate is the go-between. It's the attorney. The, okay, and what should you do? When you mess up, what you should you if you mess up, what should you do? Go with Jesus and do what? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Read. 
He is the propitiation for our sin, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. Read. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. Keep his commandment. Keep his commandment. Keep his commandment. Don't do it. If you do it, you go to him. <clears throat> One nine. If we confess our sin, he favors us to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't do it. You mess up, go to him and repent and don't do it no more. Don't do it. Jesus ain't told nobody to sin. God ain't told nobody to sin. Your pastor did. All right, go, let's go back. First Peter two twenty one that we shall follow his step, who did no sin, who did no sin. Don't sit. Follow you, following Jesus. Don't sin. Neither will God foul in the mouth. Don't let no God be found in your mouth. Don't let God be found in your mouth. I had to correct a friend of mine and rebuke a friend of mine last night they called me. And we're talking about scripture. And got to give an example. And my God, she, she would have put it up and called the saints' name on stuff they did and said years ago. Well, you know, sister so-and-so, she said this. And bishop so-and-so, he said this. And they said this happened. I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. What are you bringing up their names for? To show what they show what they did years ago. What you bringing up their names for? You trying to slander them. You trying to slander them. You trying to throw shade. I had to rebuke them. Let no God be found in your mouth. You trying to kill your neighbor and destroy your neighbor? Let no God of the seat be found in your mouth. No God. No God. No God. Be found in your mouth. Trying to destroy them. Destroy their cows. Calling their names. I said, hold it. Hold what you're doing. I see you. I try to sneak that in there. I see you. Well, she did say this, and she said her husband did this. And hold it. I had to rebuke her. Trying to murder, so I don't care. I don't care if it's true. You don't go to drag, you know, slanging mess. Slanging mess. I stopped in her track. Well, I'm just saying, well, no, don't say it. Shut your mouth. Don't say it. Don't go there. Don't you go there with me. Try to destroy your neighbor. Your sister, your brother. All right. Follow his step. Who did no sin? Neither would God found in the mouth. You, you follow his step. Don't do no sin. Don't let no God be found in your mouth. All right, that, that knock out preacher saying God said so and see for a million, that gets you. That is much more to that, but that gets you. Deceit, deceitful. God, deceit. All right. Who, when he will revive, revive not again. When they revile you, don't you revile again. You're following his step now. When he suffered, he threatened not. When, when he was suffering, don't say, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you now. You persecute me, I'm going to get you. I, I, I'm going to get you. When you least expect it, I'm going to get you. Now, you're following his step. But committed himself to him that judges righteously. I'm committed to God. Lie on me, persecute me all you want to, but I'm committed to God. I ain't got to justify myself to you. I ain't getting back at you. I'm committed to God. All right. Who his own self bear our sins, our sin, on his body on the tree, that we being dead from sin should live unto righteousness. That's the purpose of his death, bear, resurrection. That's the purpose of his blood that we should, we being dead to sin, you probably be dead to sin. Should live unto righteousness, live unto righteousness, live unto righteousness, live righteous. Do that that is right in the sight of God. Live unto righteousness. 
Live unto righteousness. <laughs> Live unto righteousness. My time getting away from me. Live unto righteousness. Live unto righteousness. All right. Let, let me go. Let me go here. I need to go to Titus. And we coming back. Go to Titus 2. Titus 2 11. Titus 2 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. You know, you know, you, you know the devil said, and your pastor said, no, oh, we saved by grace. You ain't got to do no way. You saved by grace. You ain't got to do that. You're a lying devil. You got to repent. You got to believe. Read. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. You preaching grace? You preaching the love of God? It's something that you got to say. For the grace of God that brings salvation. In the book of Titus, the second chapter, the 11th verse. For the grace of God that brings salvation. Had to appear to all men. Here what grace do. Teaching us. That denying ungodliness. What deny me? Repent. Stop it. Denying ungodliness and worldly love. We should live soberly. Righteously. And godly in this present world. That's how you live. Back back to back in front of Peter. <clears throat> that we should live righteously. Righteous by whose strike we are healed. That ain't referring to no physical healing. That ain't talking about no physical healing. Somebody got 1 Peter 1 19. Let's see what that is. My God. Uh, 18. For as much as ye know that, that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver, gold, from your vain uh, conversation. You were redeemed from your vain conversation with silver and gold. Received by tra no tradition of your father, meaning the law. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as a, as a lamb without blemish and spot. Who verily was for our day before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him. Who by him do believe in God. That raised him up from the dead and gave glory. Gave him glory. That your faith and hope might be in God. Before the foundation of the world. Before our day. Before the foundation of the world. For the foundation of the other world, it was for ordained how we should live. All right. <clears throat> Go to Ephesians one, folks. I God wanna take my time and give you a good understanding. You ain't getting this in your chest. You done having prayer breaks and, 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 and prophesy to your neighbor. You know what prophesy to your neighbor mean? Look over and lie, lie to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. That's all it means. You're lying. Call you not prophesying. You're lying. You're lying. That's not prophecy. That's a lie. Okay, read. Ephesians 1 4. According as he had shown us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. What? Holy? No. Baptist. Holy? No. Church God Christ. Holy? Episcopalian. Holy? Methodist. Holy? Christian. Holy? Pentecostal. Holy? Spiritual. No. Holy. Uh huh. <laughs> Got religion. Holy. I felt something. Holy. I passed out, rolled in the floor. Holy. I was slain in the spirit. No. Holy. <laughs> and we should be holy. And without blame. Before him and look. Without blame. All right. Yeah. One, 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 seven. That's right. In, in, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Redeemed from what? From your sin. Through his blood for the forgiveness of sin. According to the riches of his grace. All right. 
If he into that day, if he into that day, but now in Christ Jesus, whom ye who sometime were a fall, yeah, yeah, you are fall, you were, you were a fall, are made nigh by the blood of Christ, through Christ. You're not here. You're in him. Through Christ. You're redeemed through Christ. Uh, all right. Now, who had that scripture? <coughs> By his stripes we are healed. Let, let's explain that. Uh, that healing was not talking about physical healing. That's talking about healing from your sin. Who had this? Who, who, somebody... Where the scripture at? Mark Matthew, where was it at? Where was it at? Somebody put it back on the screen. Where is that, Sister Robinson? You, you put it up there. Where, where was it at? He that whole need all position. Where is that scripture at? Somebody put it up there. Come on now. Come on. Find before I find. Find for our fact. He is holding our position. Come on, put the put the scripture back up there now. He that is holding need not Mark 217. Oh, Alright. I, I don't I don't know what this is. No, let's see. See is that it? Mark 217. Let's see. Ah, uh, well, two seventeen is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, isn't it? That's it. That's it. That's it. Mark two seventeen. See, need to begin with the fifteen first. Give good understanding. Mark two fifteen. Read with us. You ain't getting this in your chest. And it came to pass that Jesus said it be in, in his house. And it came to pass as Jesus said at me in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. Publicans and sinners. <laughs> I heard somebody say, Publicans and sinners can't get to Jesus because we in the way. That's another story. For there were many and they followed him. Pub yeah, they follow it. Publicans and sinners. Following Jesus. No, they ain't saved, but they follow it. They were following. All right. If people not saved following you, if people not saved following you, they admire you. They admire your teaching and whatever and whatever. And they following you. Okay, at some point now, you got to turn around and give them the truth. Uh, some of y'all get that later on. They followed him, and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eat it with publicans and sinners? Here it is. And when Jesus heard it, heard it, he said unto them, <coughs> They that are whole need not a physician. But they that are sick. They say, talk about no physical sick. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Now he's going on to explain. I came not to call the righteous, but sins to repentance. You in sin, you sick. You sick. You sick. You healthy, you sick. It's for physically sick, but they ain't sick. They whole because they right. 
It folks, it folks not sick, but they are sick because it's cause they are in sin. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's what the blood is for, the remission of sin. That reason you came to call sinners to repentance. Now some say, well, what about healing? But I told you, by his stripes, they ain't talking about no physical healing. That's talking about he did his whole need not a physician. That's talking about sin sick. Well, what about the healing? Let's show you about that. We need to go to, excuse me. We need to go to I think I want John. We're going to show you about show you about physical healing. I need Here what I need. I need you all to give me the script. Put the script up there before I get it. Put the script up there where, where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Get that script and put it on the screen. Get it before I get it. And we're going to show you the healing part. But Peter's mother-in-law was healed. See, you see, I'm not, I'm not, and I admit some folks that rattle off scriptures and go to here, 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 here. Well, some I can, but a lot of I, I know what it say, but I can't tell you exactly where it's found. I have to look for myself. Now, somebody get that for me now before I get it. What Jesus healed. Peter's mother-in-law. Is that 217? No. Come on now. Come on now. Come. Luke 430. Okay. Luke 430. That's what we need. Luke 430. Thanks, Sister Ross. Let me show you the healing part. But the he physical healing was not by us right we're here. But we're going to show you the healing part. Luke 4. 30, 30, 30. Luke 4, 30. Well, no, that, that's not what I want, sis. Luke, I mean... Matthew 8, 14. Matthew 8, 14. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Look, go to Matthew 4, 18. Let's educate. Let's show this. By his strike, we're healed. And wound for our transgression, that was not talking about physical healing. That was talking about for our transgression and for our iniquity. And stripes and all that. And bruising. That was for our iniquity, for our sin. Bloodshed for remission of sin. Now let's get the healing part. Go to Matthew 8, 14. Read. <clears throat> and when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, And then Jesus will come into Peter's house. Let me stop right here. Let me stop right here and point something out. When he came into Peter's house. Now this, now this contradict the doctrine that y'all tell that the, that the disciples left their families and forsake their families to follow Jesus. Y'all say that. Some of y'all say that. They did not leave their wife and their family to follow Jesus. They still had their wives and their family. They still had them. Let's make that perfectly clear. When Jesus came into Peter's house 
and saw his wife's mother laid sick of a fever. That was Peter's house. And that was his wife's mother. He did not leave his family to follow Jesus. He still had his wife and mother-in-law. And if he had children, he still had children. Y'all talking about the disciples, the God told the disciples, lead their family, you a liar. They did not lead their family. They still had their families. Read the book. He saw Peter's mother-in-law lay sick of a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left, and she arose and ministered unto them. Read. When the even was come, they brought unto him men that were possessed with devil, and he cast out the spirit with the word, and healed all that were sick. Healed all that were sick. Now, he's talking about physical healing here. Read. That it might be fulfilled. This is the fulfillment of physical healing. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by uh, 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 Isaiah or Esau, the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. That's the scripture supporting physical healing. Now we need to go back to the prophet to show that. Go back to the same one, Isaiah, what was it, 50, 50, 50 uh, what is it, 56? No, here it is. Isaiah, fifty. Three and three. Let's read. Read. I know you never heard it, but read. I did fifty three and three. Watch this. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. As we hid, as it were our faces from him, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Watch this. Surely he had borne our griefs. He borne our griefs. That's physical sickness right there. That was the full fear that we just read in Matthew. He borne our griefs. Yes. He borne our griefs. By our sickness. He borne our griefs. He carried our sorrows. We did his strength, extend him stricken and smitten to God and afflicted. But he was wounded. Those two different, those two different things. Yes, he came healing, healing physical sickness and casting out devils and doing all that. But he was wounded for our transgression. That shifted to something else. As good as he was to us, but he was wounded for our transgression. So, but ain't no blood covering nothing. Ain't no blood covering nothing. And you can't plead the blood. You can't put any blood on nothing. The blood is for the remission of our sin. The blood is to cleanse us from our sin. The blood is to make us holy. To redeem us. That was the blood for What was our transgression? It said what it was for our transgression. With this right we heal, we show that. That's talking about healing from sin. From sin. He didn't hold the opposition. No, ain't no plead, no plead the plead the blood. Who you pleading to? I plead the blood over 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 Memphis. All this killing. I plead the blood over Memphis. No, no. Ain't, ain't no blood even waking on Memphis yet. Ain't no blood waking on Memphis. They still kill it. Ain't no blood away. If it were blood, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be killing. If they can't be repentant of their sin, if the blood cleanses them from sin, they wouldn't kill. They wouldn't hate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's go to Roman 5 9. We're gonna knock off. We gonna knock off. Roman 5 9. Roman 5 and 9. The way they look at 5 8. 
for God committed love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Much more than being not being not justified by his blood, his blood was only for the for the forgiveness, cleansing from sin. That's what the blood was for. You can't plead no blood. <laughs> the blood clear. Do you want to be saved? Do you want the blood to clean you? Repent. <laughs> yeah. Colossians 1 14, whom we have redemption through his blood, even through forgiveness of sin. 120, and having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto. I, I, uh, why that, that further didn't go, I, I, I can't get it. But we look, we gonna knock off. Look, look, we gonna knock off. You know, trust me. Believe me when I tell you. I can be preaching all day long. I've been there, done that. <laughs> Come on, we just gonna knock off. We got, we got much more to say. We just gonna knock off. That's all. <laughs> That's all. That's all. Anyway, uh, God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. All, all those uh, scriptures on the screen. The scripture we gave you. Read the scriptures that the other people of God put on the screen. Read. Uh, Sister, the Lord's soul, Sister A.J. Robinson, and the rest of them that put scripture on the screen. Read it. You ain't what to plead the blood for. You can't put no blood on nobody. You can't put the blood of Jesus on nobody. You can't do that. I plead the blood on my son. And he robbing and stealing and killing and carjacking. Ain't no blood on him. Ain't no blood even touch him. For if the blood touch him, he'll be saved. He'll be saved. Is that because you fall out in the flow and say you slain, you slain in the spirit? What that mean? What do it mean? Are you saved? Did you repent? Yeah, I talked to folk. I talked to folk that, that, that so-called slain in the spirit. They passed out. I say, what happened to you? I don't know. I just fell out. You got to be holy. You got to be holy. All right. That's enough of that. God bless you. God keep you. Is my prayer. God bless you. God bless you. <clears throat> God bless you.